Hey, Zach here from Front Hack Outfitters Canoe Kayak Center. Today, we're gonna have a quick look at canoe design, or hull design, whatever you wanna call it. We'll kinda of go over some of the features uh, to help guide you into what to look for in different, uh, well, not necessarily models, but the different aspects of what to expect when you're looking at canoes. So I think one of the first things worth mentioning is, uh, is the rocker profile of a canoe. And what that is, is that's going to be the kind of the curvature from the center out to the, the, the bow and stern of the canoe. The term for that curvature from the bottom uh, in the center coming out to the sides is going to be the hull profile and then into the chine profile, which are the sidewalls of the canoe. Let's talk about rocker profile real quick. The amount of rocker is going to seriously affect a couple of things. It's going to decrease the speed, but it will increase the maneuverability of the canoe. Why would we want a canoe that's highly maneuverable? Well, if you're paddling whitewater a lot, you're going to want a little more rocker. If you're paddling, say, in races or flat water and you want something that's a bit faster, you're going to want something with less rocker. A flatter canoe, in the sense of having a longer water line with less rocker, is going to be more efficient and faster in the water. So the next character this is we're gonna look at is the actual hull profile. And we're gonna have a couple of different shapes and there could be a couple of features built into the hull that are gonna affect how the canoe performs on the water. Take for instance, this classic Prospector. This is a, a everybody knows Prospector. There's a few manufacturers who build, you know, kind of legit Prospectors and then there's molds that aren't necessarily a Prospector, but they still call them a Prospector. But for instance, what you'll find, what you'll find on the Prospector is generally going to be more of a shallow arch hull. And what that is, it's going to be more of a, a rounded shape on the bottom. Uh, you'll find that it maybe doesn't feel as stable on the primary side when it's just kind of sitting flat. It's going to be able to transition edge to edge much easier than something with a flat hull. So why is that maneuverability important? Why is that edge to edge transition important? Well, it, it comes down to that maneuverability aspect of if you're running white water or rivers and you need to be able to kind of turn the canoe quickly uh, in rough water or rough conditions, a canoe with an arch hull is actually going to perform better and feel more stable in that type of environment compared to something with a flat bump. So let's talk about your flat bottom canoe. So the Canadian is a good example of what we would kind of class as a recreation or, or you know, user-friendly tripping canoe. It's still absolutely a very good tripping boat. It's gonna offer more primary stability, so as it's sitting there on flat water, it's gonna feel really, really stable. The downfall, though, is as you get into choppier conditions, that canoe wants to sit flat on the wave, and if it comes up, it's gonna broach easier or flip over easier because of that flat bottom and it wanting to kind of stick to the bottom of the wave as opposed to sitting with the canoe on that wave in that trough, kind of sitting more level. I know it's kind of hard to digest, but that's the gist of it anyway. So a flatter bottom canoe is gonna be great for your recreation paddler or your you know, family that's going out tripping canoes and want something that's gonna feel really, really planted on flat water. This has the implementation of a keel on it. And keels can come in a couple of different variations. And what a keel is, is it's essentially a strip that runs from the bow to the stern of the canoe and offers help with tracking and stability to a degree, depending on the style of the keel. This is what we would call a shoe keel. So it's about an inch wide by about half an inch deep. So it's not gonna offer a ton of assistance in say tracking or stability, but it's certainly there and does help improve. Also on a flat bottom boat, the keel actually helps build a little bit of structure into the canoe as well to help with that uh, stiffness of the hull. Uh, so you don't have a lot of flexibility characteristics that you might find in something that has a flat bottom without a keel in it. So another term you might hear thrown around a lot is uh, symmetrical versus asymmetrical. And what does that mean? Well, essentially it's kind of two larger classifications of canoes. Certain models are going to fall under the symmetrical category and others are going to fall under the asymmetrical category. Your classic canoes are generally almost always going to be a symmetrical design. And really what that means is the center point of the canoe on a symmetrical canoe like this Canadian here is the widest part is the center. On an asymmetrical canoe, the widest point is towards the stern a couple inches behind center. And how does that transition into the design? Well, the asymmetrical boat is gonna have more of this kind of diamond shape to it uh, with a very sharp entry line, generally increases the efficiency and the speed and the tracking of the canoe. They're gonna have less rocker, really, really good efficient flat water tripping boats. Um, and canoes like the Paramount, the Horizon, the Boundary from H2O are all asymmetrical designs and have become one of my favorites just because they are, they're fast, they're, they're fun on the lake to paddle, 
Some downsides is they don't generally solo as well as a symmetrical design, unless you're using something like a kneeling thwart. But if you're looking for a really efficient, fast canoe, symmetrical is the way to go. The drawback, uh, well, you give up a bit of stability in order to increase the efficiency of the boat. And that's gonna be standard for canoes, kayaks, sups. As you increase efficiency and speed of your vessel, generally you have to give up something and that usually comes at the cost of stability. So another feature that you're going to find more so on these classic designs is that up swept bow and stern. You know, it has that very kind of smooth look to it of that classic canoe look. The asymmetrical designs, however, generally are a little bit flatter and there's, again, benefits and drawbacks to both of those. Your classic canoe with the up swept bows are going to be more prone to windage. You know, they've got more exposed area to the wind. On the other hand, though, if you're in a rough water environment, something like the Paramount's going to do really well because of that upswept bow. It's going to kind of cut up higher onto a wave as opposed to that water wanting to come in over top. So again, this is why we're looking at, you know, the benefits and drawbacks of certain hull designs and characteristics. There isn't one design that does everything really well. It's just, it just doesn't exist. It doesn't exist in the kayak world. It doesn't exist in the canoe world. There are boats that can do everything relatively well, but they're gonna suffer in certain categories. The Prospector design is certainly worthy of, of mentioning as a canoe that kind of does everything pretty well. Uh, you know, it's, it's maneuverable. It's been around, the design has been around for, you know, 100 odd years as one of the kind of the really classic designs. And it's stuck around for good reason. Uh, it's maneuverable. It's still fairly quick in the water. It can pack a ton of gear. It's available in different lengths, depending on what your needs are and how much gear you need to take with you. So to summarize real quick, uh, I, I think, you know, kind of the, the key points that we want to get at here is canoes that are more on the recreation side of, of the, the canoe world are going to be offering more stability. They're going to have that flat bottom and they're going to have less rocker. Canoes more on the intermediate to advanced user are going to be narrower and they're going to have that generally that shallow arch without a keel. So it's really going to be up to you, the end user, figuring out what you need to your canoe to be. You need something for the family that's going to be really stable to fish out of. I'd look for something that probably has more of a flat bottom on it. You want something that's going to be really versatile in a tripping situation, whether it's for white water or for flat water, there's going to be a couple of different routes you can go to kind of specialize in either one or the other or have one that's kind of general and can maybe tackle both. So if you have any questions, feel free to give us a call, send us an email. You can have a look at frontnackoutfitters.com for any of the descriptions on the boats and what they might be most suited for. As always, thanks again for watching. Hope you learned something today. See you next time.